am excited about this Big Ops Friday that has been brought to you by our friends at Big Ops Digital. D-I-G-I-T-A-L, digital, let's go, my friends. They are killing the game out there, and they're bringing this show to us. It's every Friday, or every other Friday, I should say, right? Fixed Ops Friday, here we are. I'm oh. Frillin' Arts once again, the subprime here. I'm with my brother, Lou Ramirez, the car guy. And we have some special Ooh. guests today. We have Owen Moon. He's here. He's going to be a regular on these shows. Him, Brad, they're going to be going, right. going back and forth. They might both be on the show. Brad's at a charity event today. Kudos to him for going out there, trying to make some things happen for his community. Let's go. Doing some big things, right? And Making things happen. The incredible, oh. epic AF. That's right. Here, the one, the only Robin, Robin Wilson. Wilson. I'm going to keep it quiet because we're going to get loud in a minute. Happen up in here. We're trying not to scare the dogs, but it is about to go down <laughs> up inside of the cafe today. And we are pumped up to pump you up. So let's get ready to get this show started. We are so, so, so excited to be brewing solutions for you. Just before we were getting everything cooking, we were just getting the, the smell in the air of all the solutions that those of you that have <laughs> service departments need to be sipping on. Oh, man. So, do yourself a favor and grab a pen, grab a notepad, grab a whatever, and get ready to get excited because this cup is going to be piping hot with some solutions for you. It's going to be overfloweth with information. I'm always ready to brew, right? And this, and this information, get your cups ready. Have them empty because it's about to get filled up with some great information for you to take back to your dealerships, take back to your workplaces, take back to your sales staff. And when I say sales staff, yeah, man, Fixed Ops has sales. That's right. We were just That's talking right. about that. And it's a That's big right. part of the dealership sales. So why aren't we training them to be better salespeople? I don't know. Why aren't we doing that? We could talk about that today too. We could talk about the BDC for a service department. Is your BDC, do you even have a BDC for your service department? What's your follow-up game like in your service department? Do you check out things? We got so many things so that we can just throw at you. We're going to talk about ready, today. Ready. Man, we got Owen Moon in the casa. And Owen Moon's been doing it for a long time. And Robin, man, has she been supporting this for a very, very long time? She is a solutionary. She is epic AF. She's somebody that I consider a sister, a friend, a mentor. She brings the fire, man. And I'm, I'm pumped up, man. I'm pumped up. You could tell. A little, a little jazzed, a up, little caffeinated. A little caffeinated. You know. you know what's going on, everybody. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get this party started because we mm -hmm. have these two solutionaries that are just sitting over here watching these yakaholics yak at. Simple this. for us to just but yak away. We are going to open the door for what needs to be a wide open door for more females in fixed ops and welcome in the lady onto the stage, the one, the, the only, only Robin Wilson. Man, she's with the SCP Agency. One of the founders. I love her for so much. She's amazing. She's a friend of ours. Thank you for being here on the show today. Wow. Keep that moving with us. Robin, get that move going because I know. You know, I know Robin gets down. Showing. That's right. Be incredible. Mr. Fixed Ops Digital himself. The one. The only. Owen Moon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Hey. Man, that is one incredible individual right there, and he is. I'm right ready, man. I'm excited. Inside of the cafe, and it is seriously about to get epic. Man, let's pour some solutions yeah. out. Let's get this rocking, everybody. Let's do this. So well, happy to see you. So, Robin, welcome to, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? So good. It's so good. The weather's finally good here in Missouri, and I'm happy. I totally get that. Oh, it is beautiful here today. It's like 80 degrees in Kentucky after a free spell we just had. So beautiful day. I'm over here, short sleeves, ready to go out here. I'm actually getting sweaty in my own. I need to turn the AC in this building. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. The good thing is, is that this is very, very light. Yeah, that's that swag right there that he's wearing. Oh, wow. Look at that one. Hello. Bingo. All right. All uh, right. He's over here jealous. I can see yeah, Owen down here like, man, where's my, where's my, yeah, yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I didn't get the memo. So I didn't either, man. I'm but he over does here. look like he's ready to jump inside of a service drive. Let me tell you. There's no doubt yes, about yes. it. You know, we're over here rocking our fixed stops hats right now and we love it. It's, it's classy. It's stylish. I got my Kane automotive shirt from his last event that I just went to last week. It was amazing. Folks, if Incredible. you haven't been there before, reach out to Lou and I. We can tell you all about it. We're excited. But today, I'm super excited to have what we're talking about, Fixed Ops Friday. And today, we have some special people in. Robin, she's been doing some amazing things. She doesn't just bring service to your BDC on the sales side. She brings it to your service side. And we're going to talk about that today, how that can help improve your CSI scores there, how it can improve customer retention, and most importantly, how you can sell more product when they're being used and utilized the correct way. Huge, huge, huge. More money. That's what happens there. 
money. So, so much that can be contributed. And folks, we want to let you understand. You see, the, can you see this right here? You see how much grinding there is inside of that? You don't understand how many beans there are that takes to grind out solutions like this. There are so many things that could be utilized inside of making your business better inside of the service department that it, we're just going to scratch the surface. You're just going to get a couple of sips of these solutions, but you can get so much more if you reach out to them. Then let's go this way. <laughs> them, right here these two you can get a lot of solutions if you reach out to them man and we are going to go ahead and get your taste buds ready for the good stuff that they are brewing welcome to the show you all let's 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 figure something out real quick let's just real fast get a quick understanding of how long how long you have been doing your business right now from from the the not necessarily the idea point but from where you've actually been connecting to dealers and actually brewing solutions and i'm asking this to owen as we get this moving and pass that right over to robin because we want to show that there is some seasoned understandings and some exposure <laughs> that these incredible individuals have to the solutions that are out there so help us understand that real quick owen how long have you been doing what you're doing Oh man, you really want me to date myself, don't you? Come on. <laughs> All right, so 2000, I had no idea what was going on in the car business, and I ended up landing a job with an ad agency that was 100% automotive. And they had just lost some key piece of, we call it today, tier two business, I guess you could say. And so they had this infomercial where they were literally going to go out and they were going to put this into the in dealerships for subprime, obviously, Fred, right to your heart. But nobody was doing this. So I came on board. And I traveled around the country for about two years, you know, basically in the trenches at store level, learning everything from banks to inventory to process to, you know, things that we take for granted today, like BDC software, you know, different things like that. That was stuff that, that I was learning on the fly. And so, so I was very fortunate, you know, that years later I can use some of that as we continue to, you know, build products and build solutions. And, and I've always called myself a disruptor. Uh, everything that I usually have done in this space has been some sort of a, a disruption, whether it be geofencing, you know, 10 yep. years ago, the, the infomercials and the subprime products. And then now, you know, with, with Fix Ops Digital, we started this company four years ago. Nobody was doing what we were doing. And, uh, you know, so we just kind of said, hey, let's put this together and let's see what happens. And, uh, you know, going on our fourth year, we're, we're almost a 700 dealers, like 650 mm. plus, and we're growing every day. And the beautiful thing about what we do, and I'll, I'll just kind of pass over to Robin because she's been a great friend of mine and, and somebody that has supported us since the beginning. We are the type of company that works hand in hand with all the other parts of the dealerships partners, right? We're other business. So, you know, whether we're talking, you know, repair financing, which, which obviously we've taken, you know, sort of the, the lead on that, but even to like a, a service BDC that's, that's offsite or that's uh, contracted, like Robin obviously heads up, we feel like we have to be that glue that brings it all together because most partners want to, you know, sort of segment each other or say, Hey, you got to just use our stuff because that's that, cause we're bringing that solution. We're not that company at all. And so it's allowed for us to really focus on other parts of their business and sort of integrate with what we do. And so when, when we thought, Hey, who's going to be our first guest on fix ops Friday, I couldn't have thought of a better person to bring on than Robin Wilson, right. obviously a friend of mine, but also somebody that I think is doing it right. And, and is really providing some great values for, for dealerships today. So with that, I'm going to pass that up to uh, absolutely. To Robin. Let's Robin go. is the one. And let me tell you, before Robin, before you, I got to just tell you all, she's built a reputation on her reputation, right? Mm -hmm. She has a great one. And this is why she's able to partner up with people like Owen and so many others, even other BDC companies. They team up with they her work. to use her to be able to help facilitate extra that they have. Mm -hmm. And she takes it graciously and she's out there helping. And guess what? That part of the BDC is fantastic. They're rocking and rolling. They are. They truly are epic AF. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I'm excited to have you on here, Robin. What's going on? Tell everybody your story. I'll try to single it down really small. So I don't have like the depth that most of you guys have in the automotive industry. I came from the mortgage industry, and when that dissolved, I found myself at 48 years old trying to figure out what my next career looked like, and automotive became it, um, and it was kind of happenstance. I had no desire to be in automotive, but I knew social media, and it was at a time when dealers were starting to realize that they needed social. They needed that communication piece to talk to their customers. That's where their customers were. They needed to be there, and I've loved every bit of it. I started my company in 2013 catering to small business owners who brought us out of the recession. The mortgage meltdown really crashed our economy so bad and small business owners by the hundreds of thousands 
brought us out of that. And then they were trying to compete with big box brands for marketing dollars and they just couldn't. And social media was the answer at that time. And that's where we segued in. And then the BDC side of it kind of happened. I have a cousin that's really great at seeing trends, like what's coming next. And he's always got his finger ahead of uh, ahead of whatever's coming next. I, I don't have that, but I do see gaps in the market. I see when there's an opening to step into, and then I'm not afraid to step into them. And that happened in 2019, before 2020, before the big mess, we had already entered the BDC world, just were pulled into it by our clients. And we started filling a gap and then that gap got bigger and bigger and we just kept growing and growing. And we went from 13 employees at the beginning of 2020 to now we're sitting at 70 plus in a building that will hold 200. And so we understand that there's times when you just have to put your foot on the gas and go forward and partnering with other BDCs that went through, gosh, that employee crunch, right? That trying to get employees was a really hard, hard thing. And so if we had the capacity because we had employees, I, my ego does not get in the way whenever you, hey, can you step in and help? Absolutely. Do you need us for two weeks? Do you need us for two months? How long do you need us? We're here to help. And that's just kind of how everything in my business has grown has been through collaboration and networking and friendships that have been made. And just like you guys, I made, I made it a point to say, who do I need to know? Who's where I want to be? Who's doing the damn thing already? Write this and, down, and, everybody. Come on. Yeah. And then lock arms with them and go teach me something. And then I have to remember to reach back down and do that again to somebody else who's coming up behind me. And this yeah. is why, and I normally do this at the end of the show, but this is why you are 100% CGC approved. And I'm going to tell you, you are, you're powerful what you say, the words that you bring out, but the way you lead and the way that you are such a solutionary in the, in not just automotive, but like you said, you do it for small businesses, your local businesses. That's to me amazing. That's where it really starts. When you can find it, it starts with the, for one, it starts with our families. It starts with ourselves. And then we could spread that out as we start to overflow with this information and love. We go into others, our communities. Next thing you know, you're in the automotive industry and spreading this across the nation worldwide even worldwide. so just know that you what you do is powerful it's amazing and we are so honored to have you here today and whoo yes. aren't we so lucky automotive to have robin jump in here and be part of this industry aren't we I'm so, so honored to to be part of the, yeah. i'm so honored to be part of the conversation honestly yeah well okay. we're honored to have you here the conversation continues go going as we have more people wanting to jump in with their cup and what I love is that you're so understanding of how important it is some, for somebody to be pouring into your cup because you're going to have those that you're going to need to pour into too. And sometimes we actually don't have anything in our cup and we have to go seek something so that we have something else to pour out. I can't tell you how many solutions have made it to our doorsteps as, as whether business owners, parents, leaders, right? When the problem found its way to us, we said, well, I guess we got to go find a solution. If Google had it, Google had the answer, right? YouTube had the answer, YouTube That's had right. the answer. Answer, right we go and we find that solution and today we found each other on the car guy coffee podcast on fixed ops friday so that we can brew solutions that are available that is the great hope for so many dealers and so many people that are operating in their stores right now is that the solutions are available they are there they are waiting for you to utilize them and today we're going to talk about how to implement some of the incredible tools that are right there they're like right there you can reach them almost there. So car guys and car gals help make sure that other people are participating inside of this, but that you are too. If you're watching right now live, go ahead and drop a coffee cup emoji inside of there and say cheers to our incredible guests. Now that you know who they are, which you probably already did know because they are super cool. And if we're rolling with them, we are wanting to be able to pour out the awesome stuff that they have. Right. And that's what we're here for. We're here to talk about these solutions. I just, super I just text my team and said, Share the podcast right now. Let's yeah, you know, and we <laughs> appreciate you that. You know, Share but that's that the thing. You know, we're we're out here. We're sharing. This is can be watched on the replay. This could be on the podcast. Up, you are going to hear this multiple times. Just up, understand if you could just take one thing from this conversation today and take it back no. to your service department, your fixed stops department. You will make a difference. I promise. So let's get going. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's going on with follow up these days. Let's talk about what's going on in service, right? So in service, everybody doesn't. You know, we talk about this so much in, in our podcast and, and a lot of sales podcasts out there for automotive sales. We talk about, you know, what are we doing? What's, what's our numbers? What do they look like? What's our follow-up game look like? You know, but do we hear about that a lot in service? Not so much, but it's important that we do talk about that. 
And Robin, you mentioned that earlier. You talked about how when customers leave upset, having that follow-up call to see what happened, maybe that can make the difference before they put a review on our websites, right? Before they go to Google and say two stars. Or before, before they, they do that survey. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Before they get the survey from the manufacturer. So explain that to me. What, what are you doing? What do you have there that's helping people get better at that at their dealerships? So the strongest thing that they can do, if the tough part is, is that for uh, service advisors are a different breed of people. Like they're not that they're not customer service service oriented. They're generally solve they're problem solvers and they're solving a problem, and they don't tend to be very emotional people. And so if you can have anybody, even if you don't have a service BDC, if you got anybody at your dealership that is super good, they're just so personable. They're that person that you would want to talk to on the phone that they go through every RO that came in the day before and they're calling those people and asking them, how was your experience yesterday? Did they explain everything to you well? Did you have any questions that maybe you forgot to ask and you remembered them on the way home? Can I get those answered for you? Okay, great. Now you're going to be getting a survey in the next couple of days be coming from Chevy, Ford, Kia, whoever. And if there's any reason you know, why you have any questions about what the questions are on the survey, I would be glad to answer those for you. Here's my direct line. Just call me back. Those are so important because a lot of times whenever you're at a dealership, you don't remember all the questions that you should have asked, right? You're, because it's transactional. Everything's transactional when you're in the service department. And then you leave and you go, oh my God, I forgot to ask him if they got that little rattle thing that was going on in the trunk fix or if they even looked at it and he didn't address it and I forgot to ask. And so those right. can be super helpful and they make your dealership feel like they care. And even though they do care, a lot of times the public per perception is that we don't, right? That we don't care. And those touches right there, I mean, even if that is a you know $15 an hour employee, that their job is just to call and make sure that this customer got all of their questions answered and their needs met while they were at the dealership. And if not, you're this, you're the solver for it. You're that solution for that. And it's super important. One of the things that Owen does that I love, this is why I fell in love with you, Owen, as a friend, is that in the dealership, you know, marketing is mostly, most of those marketing dollars are thrown into sales because that's the sexy part of the dealership, right? C selling cars, push all hundreds of thousands of dollars to that. And the service department is lucky if they get anything, if they, I mean, literally if they get anything and that Owen recognized that early on and went, look, we can, we can make this super affordable for you, drive more in your traffic lane, drop some service ads for you, track that ROI of that give you some more, some more traction on your website. I mean, one of my best seminars I ever sat in of Owens was talking about the tire page and it never crossed my mind that the dealership's website should have a tire page, right? Because I don't know that I would necessarily, before I was in automotive, that if I needed tires, that I don't know that I would have thought of my dealership first. Nope. I would have well, thought dealerships, yeah, dealerships never have any sort of display, right? I mean, we always talk about, we say, look, not only do you have to have that, it should go from the website to, to the dealership and, and kind of reciprocate, right? And so, yeah, we don't have anything on our website, but we, we don't have anything in our dealerships either. So it's, and then of course you, you, you see stats about retention and about, you know, Chrysler or Stellantis now, you know, came out with data a couple of years ago that we were using in some of our presentations about just if the dealership sells those tires, they will then sell another car. And so it, it all works together, right? And I, and, I, and I definitely agree. One question I had for you, Robin, you had mentioned these and that type of thing. Let's just kind of break it back to the beginning. I mean, obviously some dealerships today I talked to don't even have a BDC. They still have never invested in that. But some dealerships have, you know, have a BDC for sales. But mm -hmm. then I asked them if they have a service BDC and they give me like weird things like, well, we're working on it or, or, you know, we're, we're thinking about it or, you know, and my question has always been not coming from the BDC side as much as like, why would you need a separate BDC or what's the difference or, you know, what it, besides maybe volume, right? That might be the case. You just need separation because there's so much coming in. Are there other things that, that you do differently with, with the service BDC that's different from sales? I'm, that, I think that would be a good thing to maybe touch on as well. So there, there are generally two different types of humans that would be in the service BDC or the sales BDC, just because the conversations are so different. And depending on whether you're doing inbound, outbound, or both, inbound, 100%, I believe probably a sales BDC could handle some of that overflow. Once again, those advisors... We know how burnt out there they are this year, right? Our service techs and service advisors, everybody is just fried because the lack of employees. 
And so them building those inbound calls coming in is really almost a nuisance. So if you've ever called your service department, it's not the most pleasant call ever. These guys are distressed beyond belief. I feel so, I feel so bad for them. Talk about um, multitasking, right? <laughs> right. Like, and there's probably a line of people standing in front of them going, why did he answer the phone? I'm standing right here. And the know? clock's ticking on a job. It's just yeah, ticking. It is. And so if you can have somebody that's just dedicated to listening to the problems that the customer is experiencing, tell me, tell me what you're experiencing. They're making really good notes. They're, they're generally, we're constantly in, in communication with somebody in actually in the service department to go, this is what they're saying, da, da, da. And they'll be like, yeah, probably a diagnostic need to bring it in. There's slots open in X time for that, scheduled for that. Whereas, you know, we have a different CRM for the sales side. They don't communicate to each other. One of the things that I was looking at, I don't know if you guys saw this come out, the NADA report that just came out. In 2021, just service labor sales in 2021, customer mechanical, $23 billion. Ooh. Wow. Like literally $23 billion. <laughs> yeah. And, and so think about the fact that how heavy are we right now in selling used cars versus new? Like we're upside down, right? Where it used to be like, we want to sell 60% this 40% or however everybody's breakdown was. And now we're, we're lucky if we're doing 75 pre-owned and 25 new it's so lopsided right now so with those older model of vehicles and even if they're two three four years old that are coming out of warranty those service departments are going to be even more heavy burdened and mm -hmm. so can they handle can they handle the inbound calls are they are they even able to get to their new customer calls on those recall campaigns that need to be dialed out those people need to know one of one of the best bdcs that i ever learned at was roper kia and they have an amazing service bdc and one of the greatest things that they would ever do is whenever the minute that they found out they had a recall coming, they would check with their parts guy and go, how many do we have of the thing that needs to be on this recall? Do we have enough? Could we could start a campaign and start calling through? So we get ahead of it before those people receive that thing in the mail to tell them there's a recall. Yeah. And everybody's out of the parts, right? So they would double down on it right now and go, well, we have 200 of them, but it looks like in our database, we have 450 people that are eligible for this recall you order the parts, we'll start the campaign. When will they be in? And we'll start working those in. So those outbound recall campaigns, getting ahead of that supply chain right now are super important too. And even if the parts aren't available, are there recalls that are on technology? Any computer upgrades that need to be made that, that they don't need parts for, we just need to be able to squeeze them in and, and get that service lane full at the same time. So the service BDC is a different mindset than the sales BDC. The sales BDC is generally overcoming any fears or concerns with buying a car or having a down payment or having a trade-in vehicle or getting having approved. Credit. Yeah. Having credit. Credit. Yeah. Well, you, you got me thinking, Robin, that people, almost the dealership needs to rethink how they operate the service department. And some have, right? I mean, adding express lane. I know dealerships that have taken their internal work and moved it off site. So that way they're not bogging up their you know, their resources at the dealership for internal work. They've moved that to an offsite location. I had a dealer tell me the other day, they've gone to three shifts. They have a day shift, they have a night or a night shift and they have an overnight shift, you know? Now that's hard to do if you have an, a labor shortage, right? But thinking outside the box, there's so much opportunity. We're still only getting one out of every $3 probably in the, in the market, right? You know, that's coming to the dealership. It's all about creating a, a, a workflow that creates an expectation for the dealer or for the customer. Right. And that kind of goes back to what you're talking about with making, making calls and things like that. I mean, that's the end result. It's the beginning and the end, but it's what happens in the middle that, that I think needs to be addressed just as much as the other side. And, you know, we're, we're hoping that that continues to get better because if it does, you won't see those bad surveys. You won't see those bad reviews mm -hmm. because the expectations will be met all the way through and uh, it'll it'll start to you know work together you know more more uh, consistently i guess you know one of the one of the greatest things i ever saw i mean to interrupt you real quick was so if you drive any level of a luxury brand vehicle and you service at a luxury dealership the difference in service is night and day oh it's mm -hmm. it's completely different mm -hmm. it's like, no they, questions and how much does that experience cost i mean actually how much more does it cost land rover for them to create an, a great experience for me as it does Kia, Hyundai, Chevy, Toyota. 
It, and, and, but, but you know what the question is and how it's not just how much does it cost it's how much are they is it cost them that they're not making because they're not doing that right you're yeah. losing customer retention you're losing the the trust because that the service there alone land rover i know that service and when you go there it it you don't mind spending that money there because you know what you're getting you're getting good service they're going to take care of you they're going to supply you with some a way to get around if you need to get around while they're servicing your vehicle they're going to make sure you have something cold or warm to drink they make you feel good it's almost like your own concierge you know you sit down with them and they're dressed up just as nice as anybody on the floor right and you feel you feel so good and it does feel right and that type of thing is you will pay more for it, but you the trust level is already built just the moment you walk in you feel like okay this place isn't going to get me this place is here to take care of me do you right. know that I have my own service advisor? His yes. name is Nathan. That he's mine. Like I don't have to walk in and just wait for somebody to greet me. I walk in and I know Nathan belongs to me. He's That's mine. Right. That's right. L little That's things it. like that, you know. And, and so, you know, just to throw, I don't mean to cut you off, Lou. You're probably biting at the no, bit. No. So am I, right? But, but <laughs> the staggering number, billions of dollars, my friends, billions of dollars. It's it's involved in this industry. So if you're thinking about that and you're not doing something about that, come on. You could reach out to people like Owen. You could reach out to people like Robin and so many of other amazing solutionaries because I'm going to tell you, there's plenty of us out there that want to help you get better at this. There's plenty of us out there that want to make sure that the future of automotive, the future of the, the freaking fixed ops department is in good hands. It's going to be fantastic, right? And we want to make sure it does. And there's people out there that know what they're doing. Little differences. So we're talking billions of dollars, but you just make smi minor, 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 minor differences Schmeiner. in what you do. You do these little things. And as you do them, you'll start to get better. You don't have to do everything we're telling you today, my friends. I'm telling you, like I said at the beginning, grab one of these things, make an improvement in your, in your service department. Grab one of these things, turn that into your parts department, make it better, right? Let's make things better by little things. And then add them all up, and eventually little things become big things. So, yeah. Lou, I'm sorry. I, I mean, to you. This, this little muscle inside of our mouth is the dictator of what will actually be the culture around us, right? The way that we utilize our language is all inside of how we're speaking to each other. Robin touched on it, right? And explained that how much more does it cost you to talk differently to a customer, to right. speak to them in a way that they feel valued? That's not something that you, that just just happens that becomes part of the culture this is how we speak of our employees this is how we speak of our manufacturer this is how we speak of our product this is how we speak of how the weather is today this is how we speak about the things that we don't like right when that conversation starts to be part of what's fused inside of our culture then we don't have such a big chasm between sales and service it all becomes a language that is seamless and a customer feels welcome in whether they're making a purchase on the car or in one of the many many other areas they can make a purchase in the back of the building right for those that are only selling vehicles you're 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 in a situation where you only make money if that sales transaction happens on the sales floor of the whole product in the back there's many different touch points, many different places that a customer can spend their money. And inside of that, having that language of letting them know what they can do with their money is what our responsibility is. If we have a product for them, our responsibility is to let them know what their options are. And that's what our customers are hunting for. What are my options? What can I do? What can't I do? And usually the first one that lets them know how empowered they are with their decision gets their business. So inside of that, we we want to make sure that we are having a culture that's not just within the the conversation of the service writer and the actual client, but within our business, within our culture, that we're all treating and talking about that customer the same way in the break room as we are right there when they're in, in the actual drop. Right. And that's a way that we honor our people. What is it that you've seen inside of the culture of your own businesses? Because you all have had meteoric rises in your business and that doesn't happen by accident. You cannot build the tower like that without that proper communication. What how have you seen that spill over into the way that you've done business for service drives for these dealers that are needing that culture to be infused inside of their world? I guess I'll push this over to let's go ahead and go with Robin first on that because I'm I'm just I love the graffiti and my eyes just keep going to it. <laughs> yeah, I love the background. Well, I'll tell you what, like if if any any vendor that is serving a dealer, if their company culture is crap, 
that is going to relay over to how you deliver services to the dealer and just and just the opposite way too right if i'm doing if i'm doing business with a dealer and their company culture and their customer service is garbage my company is feeling that ickiness also right so i mean we've literally we have literally fired clients for having horrible horrible customer service and horrible culture because there's just no way there's just no way that my people need to understand how to deal with how awful you're treating these humans. And one of the things too, we were talking about earlier is that a lot of the reviews that you'll see on any dealership website or any dealerships, Google my business page, any of that, a lot, a huge majority of them are from frustrated people from the service department. And that doesn't mean that the service department is bad. It just means that 90% 90% of the attention is pushed to sales and how that happens. And this little side thing called service where people's cars run smoothly and safely is neglected. I mean, going back to Nate, my guy at Land Rover, think about this customer journey. Think about the customer calls in, they get one of my people on the phone and we're walking them through. They're telling us you know, what they're experiencing. My battery light came on. It's off now, but it came on and my car wouldn't start, but it hasn't come back on again. Not a problem. When we get you in, take a look at that. You're still under warranty. That's not a problem at all. I'm going to set your appointment. I'm going to set it with Nate. And when you get here, I've got you for one o'clock tomorrow. When you get in here at one o'clock tomorrow, just walk in, park on the on the side of the service door right there. Come on in and let them know that you have an appointment with Nate. He'll be he'll be ready for you. And then her relationship is with Nate, right? And so when Nate comes back out to her and says, the battery is a problem. We don't have one in stock right now, but it looks like it's it's working perfectly at this point right now, but I've got one on order for you and it's going to be here on Wednesday. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule you for Wednesday too. Do you want my valet to come pick up your vehicle or, or can you bring it in? And then whenever Nate goes to upsell that customer something that they need on their vehicle, she has a relationship with Nate. She's beginning to trust Nate. Mm-hmm. And it's easier if people know, like, and trust you for you to sell them the things that they need and for them not to just go, they're just messing me over. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to keep explaining yourself, right? You don't have to keep starting from zero and starting to go forward. Like, here, here's what's happened over the last six months with my car or my vehicle. And now you're trying to catch somebody up. You go back to Nate. Nate knows everything that's happened on that vehicle from the time you owned it. And now there's a trust there. Mm -hmm. One thing I was going to say, and and it kind of can only go by my past experiences in life, right? It's always what drives you forward. When we were setting up subprime departments, part of the conversation was, do you have anybody at the dealership that would be interested in heading up this division, right? Heading up this department. And they always picked the number one sales guy or gal, whoever it was at the dealership. They said that person I'm going to bring over to the subprime because they knew they could make more money over there. And it was going to take more discussions with the customers because you were talking about very sensitive sides Mm -hmm. of the business. So I think about that from the service side and say, man, what if there's guys in the guys or gals in the sales department that might not be the best salespeople from a car standpoint, what would those people look like in the service department? And I'm sure as an advisor, you know, that type of thing. So I, I'm sure that's happened more times than we know. And, and it would be great to see what some of that. I'd love uh, to see that stat. Yeah, because hundred percent, because, because they have the, they have the personality to talk to customers, mm-hmm. to sell them and to show them what's happening. All they have to do is learn. So that's kind of where we went with our company. When we started this, you know, we obviously are my partnership group all had the experience. We could tell you all day long about how much we've been working with stores and, and that type of thing. But as we started to grow, I looked for the people first that had the experience and that fit our personalities and that could help us. We knew we could teach the rest, right? Yes. As we grew fast, I mean, we've grown super fast. If I would have hired what I call rookies or people have never done this before to try to maybe save a dollar, right? Because you, you know, we're still running a business. Right. I think we would have had way more cancellations than, than you know, any vendor wants, right? And we don't get a lot of cancellations. Our, mm-hmm. our churn, what they call it, is very low. We have great dealerships, partners that we work with. And they, they really look to my performance team as, as a valued partner. They're, every day, they're talking and discussing. And I think that's what sets maybe our company apart from other ones that are out there, you know, other companies that are doing, you know, service marketing. Also, just, just in general, you know, to be able to connect, you know, hey, I'm looking for a service BD's partner. You know what? I've got people. I've got someone. I, I, I've got someone right here that I could, I could recommend you to. So, you wow, know, exactly. n- those conversations don't happen all the time. But it's, but it's that type of relationship that we're looking for. And so that's when we started growing. We definitely wanted to bring people in 
So it kind of goes, you know, it helps with our business doing the same way. I think dealerships can learn from that as well. I, I 100% agree with everything that was just stated there by both of you all. And, you know, what it brings it all the way back down to and whether it's, you know, a, a having a BDC or whatever, it's your people, people first. So people process with the products. And when you have those things together and they all run together, those three P's, right? You really, really make profits. And, that, and that's the fourth P. And that's huge. And profit is not a bad word, my friends. We all know that we deserve it, but we should earn it. We don't, we're, it's not given to us. It's not handed to us. But when you earn it, you get more of it. And man, do you earn a lot of it, right? And, and it's the best of the best know what I'm talking about. They're out there doing it. They're out there doing something extra. They're making sure the people that they have, whether it's their, the people that's in the de dealership, in the service departments, the riders, the, the parts department, or if it's their BDC, their service BDC, they're making sure that those people are trained with the right language, understanding what the language of what's going on is. Because, you know, one thing, Robin's for sure, when you talk about the difference between a service BDC and a sales BDC, similar, but the language is slightly different, right? So you have to be able to speak that language. It's like Spanish and English. It's if you don't, if you can't speak both, it's very difficult. And even if you do speak both, it's very difficult. So you have to be able to really hone into that. The best of the best speak that language really well. The language of love, where it starts, but the language of whatever the problem is for them. The problem say for a purchase and a problem for a, a customer getting service is different. And their emotions are different during those yeah. moments. So I would say it's more consultative, consultative, you know, selling on the service side because yes, yes. because you have to be able to explain it in a way that that they comprehend it, the customer understands it, and and then you know make them understand the value of it. And of course, it's selling still because you're you're getting scorecarded by your managers on yeah, revenue and things like that. But right. but if you do it in a way that's that's not like, hey, I'm just here to sell you, which unfortunately, yeah. the you know, let's be honest, the car, the the sales side of the car business you know, over the years has gotten a little bit of a bad rap that it's, that mm -hmm. it's more that style. It has to be the complete the opposite inside the service department or, or that's when you will, you will lose that retention. You know like, what I'll tell you is that it works extremely well in the sales department too. Yeah, now, no, it's I'm changing talking, for sure. It is, you know, and I think it, that yeah, it's you're right. Change. The old school ways are no longer good. I mean, there's still people who like to wheel and deal and do all that stuff. <laughs> I still see those guys who come in, right? They're like, come on, buddy, let's do it this way. You're like, no, man, we don't do it that way. It's transparent now, you? right? If I could, you, none of that stuff. So it's about that. It's about really sitting down with somebody, diagnosing their problem like you're a doctor, and making sure that we're really trying to find a solution for them. Not what makes us the most amount of money, but what truly is the product that will help them get rid of the pain that they came in for. And when we have that for them and we show the value of it and we were there like their friend, like I have their hand on my shoulder, or have my hand on their shoulder and I'm talking to them like I'm their buddy and truly feel that way, not only is it more fulfilling, but man, do you sell more and you will make more profit and they will lay down first pencil almost every time. And it's not a bad thing when they do. You've got to earn it, like I said earlier, just mm -hmm. like the service department. Go in there and just truly be a solutionary. Listen to what their problem is. Figure out what that is. Now, if you know that there's extra issues, I think the extra sales are difficult sometimes because people come in. I want oil change. They didn't come there because all of a sudden their water heater is going bad or this is happening, but they, it's happening. Right. And us as the doctors, how do we build that trust? Well, Robin said it best. I believe what Land Rover is doing is they keep you with one person. So when you come in, you trust you trust Nate. You're like, that's my dude. And if he says that there's a problem with my vehicle, I know there's a problem with my vehicle. And I need to get it fixed. And he's going to give me solutions. He's going to give me probably options on how I can get it fixed in the time that I can get it fixed. Because that is my dude. Yes. Think about, when you, go, think about when you go to the doctor, right? And like you're, you're something's wrong and you don't know what's wrong, but you trust them to tell you what's going on inside your body, inside all the mechanics that are going on inside your body. And you just trust them, right? Because he's your doctor. He's been your doctor forever. Right. And right. then, and it's almost the same level of fear. And I don't know if it is for guys because guys, we all assume guys have some innate mechanical something in their brain that they just know automatically because it came with the pile of testosterone they got. <laughs> and you guys know, like I sit on the board of women in automotive. So I know like as a woman, like you're walking in and you know, they're going to come out and talk to you and it's going to be like, wah, 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 wah. and they're going to tell you a bunch of stuff. And you don't even know that you had that part in your car. You didn't even know that, you know, your car might need that. I'm not even kidding you. When I tell you how long I have been on this earth before I knew when it was time to rotate my tires, <laughs> not kidding you. Like they would go, okay, we think it's time to rotate your tires. And I'm like, are you sure? 
Like, like, <laughs> uh, the, like the, the timer pop out, like what happened to let you know that my tires needed to be rotated. And so I think that if I didn't know it, how many other people don't know yeah. when it's time and Amen. why even doing it, that those maintenance things that'll make their car last longer. We live in such a disposable society right now with car prices where they are. Can we afford to be in a disposable society? Or Slow down. I'm not sure. Actually tell me why I need my tires rotated, what it's going to save me, what's going to do for me. Like I'm a third grader because I'm, I am, I don't know, you know, what's going on in my kidneys and my livers and my body. Right. So I, I don't know what's going on inside my car either. So just tell me and tell me why. Well, one, one thing, Robin, I'll say okay. service advisor, but go ahead, Owen. No, no, no. All I was going to say was I kind of to follow up to Robin's point, And I think it ties right into this is that there's multiple ways to do that these days, right? It, you have to do it at the store level, but it can start way faster, mm -hmm. way earlier than that. And that's what sure. we do really well is that we create that message on yeah. the website to be able to tell Robin why it's important to get her tires rotated why it's important to get that alignment service yeah. and do it in a way that not only educates and informs customers, provides them some recommendations, things like that. But also while we're doing it, we're telling them why the dealership is the place to come get it right. Not, yes. not the, the independent. And so I think it has to start in, you know, people, you will get more lines per RO because you've educated customers. Now, whether that starts on the website at the dealership's website and then works its way into the service drive or even, you know, the, the turndown service to be able to send something to a turndown customer and say, Hey, I know you turned down this service today. Here's a link on our website of why this is important, but well, you're right. not sourcing a third party. You're not sourcing, you know, some cookie cutter content that, that doesn't really tell you anything. Maybe it's just up there for some, you know, to get SEO, you know, value potentially. It is actually content that is going to help that customer make those decisions. And so if you carry that all the way through, I think you win all the time, right? You're going to win more than you're going to lose. And that's ultimately where all I do is win, 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 no matter <laughs> what. But no exactly. matter what, we want to keep the conversation going. We want yes. to make sure that we're still communicating. If we don't have communication, then we have breakdown. And that's ultimately where we're trying to fuse all of these pieces together because it used to not be so important to have a good conversation in the service drive. And, that, and, and why I was saying that I love the name service advisor and always admired that is because that's what it was. That was in essence what it is. I am advising you of what it is that's going on with this multifaceted machine. Okay. That you don't know about, you don't know what you don't know. And we're going to tell you what we recommend you should be doing. And I would challenge all that are watching or listening or however that do see a dealership that has a service department who is more likely to still be at the store the service advisor to have a real tenure or the sales manager, yeah. the, the service tech or the sales pro who is a familiar face. That's more like your store. Who is the one that somebody could be calculated as saying, I always see that car parked at that dealership. That guy must've been there forever. I've been here for 15 years. That car's still there. You know what? I can still go to the same Honda store, see the same service manager and know he knows me. I know him. That familiarity is a big wall dropper, right? For everybody. If we're familiar with our surroundings, we're not so much desperate for trust or desperate to reach out for these things that can help build that trust. It's easy. It's nice. It's my guy. Just right. like the experience that's over at Land Rover. My guy knows me. They my know me. And that conversation is what helps to keep that familiarity going. But if we don't have that, for the dealers that don't have that, you started, you opened up the box to your dealership last year, okay? Right. And you want to make sure that that conversation's happening. Well, it's going to be in more places than just the drive. It's usually on the phone. It's usually in a text message. It's usually in an email before that customer gets to you. And to make sure that what Owen is, is showing everybody is that the answers are right there for you. We wanted to make sure you all knew that the answers are there. You can reach out to them and making sure that that conversation keeps going because we're still talking to you about the things that matter to you because we've seem to forget that we don't matter to the customer till they have that problem right they're not sending us birthday cards right you know what i mean to keep <laughs> keep us reminded of their love for us you know what i mean we're, we're sending them to them you know what i mean to remind them that we matter or that they matter in our world
And right? you know, sometimes you change somebody's life when you give them some knowledge, right? So Come on, yes. Owen, whenever you give people the knowledge of what's going on with their vehicle and the services that you provide for your dealerships, whenever you give that to them, like they don't lose it, right? You've given them that knowledge and they own it for the rest of time. And now they're empowered to know more about their vehicle. And not only that, they will pass that on to the next person. They'll go, oh, you know what? Well, I was at so-and-so site the other day and I learned that da-da-da, blah, blah, blah. Have you had that done? That's probably why your vehicle's doing that thing. And you've given this knowledge away and then people are empowered about their vehicles and they don't feel so powerless. About That's it. Them. And when you're not, when you've empowered, you're encouraged, right? Mm -hmm. And you just, and you feel like you can do that and you share, like you just said, you share with others. Hey, you know, Fred from ABC Motors over in the service department told me this and guess what happens? That person's going to go see Fred at ABC Motors because he knows that that person empowered that person, which makes them feel great. They're like, oh, gosh, this is a good place. Mm -hmm. Well, if they got that people. answer there or that the website, let's say, or somewhere, you know, where it was in the dealerships side of things, mm -hmm. they're going to go back there again for the next answer. And they're going to keep right. going back That's as it. opposed to if there's nothing there or if it's not very good information that they didn't learn, get, didn't learn what they were looking for. Now they're going to go find it somewhere else. And I think that's the. Uh, you know, we've done a really good job on sales, right? We've 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 beat it to death, right? We've got every possible thing that we can think of on the sales side of a website. Yep. But the service websites, I still see it is very much an afterthought. And now obviously we're trying to change that, but you know, the dealership has to make the commitment to change it first. And then we we can kind of take over from there. Same thing with with Robin and what she's doing. I mean, the the dealership has to make a decision that to have better conversations is a priority to keep that customer coming back. And once they make that decision, then they can decide how they want to attack it, whether it's with a partner or trying to do it internally, or maybe some sort of a blend. So and, you know, I can't even imagine what the trajectory of your company is going to be Owen with all of this. I mean, all of this pre-owned that's going on right now, it's just got to be getting so heavy on the service department that your services are going to be so huge for people. And I always love that the decline service, that decline service tag, right? So we've told you something's wrong and we told you that we can fix it. And then you're like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> you think about it, like if you went to the doctor and he's like, okay, this is wrong and this is wrong, but here, this is what we'll fix. And you're like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there's so many times though that those conversations that happen in the service drive i know what it's like to be broke i've been there i get it you're making a recommendation i do i'm making a decision whether we're eating tonight right. or i'm fixing this part on my car right and sometimes that talk happens inside of that service drive and it's just a seed right that's just the seed that can turn into something if somebody comes back to water it and that's what we love about the attention that is being recognized that's needed in that service drive for a bdc because right. somebody's got to come water that right after you plant those seeds you better figure out how you're getting water to them otherwise it's null and void it's just over right you yeah. didn't act it's not like it, you even sowed the seed right well, and so, to your point yeah. lou there's options now than than there ever has been you know one of our big things that we pushed out this year was repair financing. We are partnered with some of the bigger ones out there like Sunbit, Dignify. They're providing a really, really great service for, for customers because if they're turning down service because of financial restraints, right? It still doesn't change the fact that they're walking, they're, they're leaving in that vehicle that might not be safe for their family. So let them have an option to be able to pay for this over time. And what we try to do is make sure that we get that pre-appointment discussion happening. So that way, when it does happen inside the service drive, it's not a shock, right? So, and so, you know, again, just another example of how things are changing in the business and how dealerships need to, to react to it. And I have a lot of conversations every week with dealers that go, you know what, I've been looking at repair financing. And then they end up going to one of our providers because they like the uh, the integration that we have, which just sort of brings uh, you know all of our partners together. But whether you you know work with us or not, the fact is is that if you're not providing some sort of a uh, you you won't win. So yeah, so what a great what a great call campaign that is. Anyways, decline service with the repair credit solution added onto it, and that's a great conversation for a uh, service BDC to have and mm -hmm. call these people who in the last thirty days had declined services and go you know it. Let's discuss why you declined it. And, you know, they're going to tell you they're always really brave over the phone. So that's never a problem. I mean, it's it's no different, Owen, than what came out a couple of years ago when care credit rolled out. Right. People needed dental work done. They needed things done and they didn't have like just the fluidity to be able to do that. Their mm -hmm. insurance was gapping here or there. And so care credit came along 
to cover all of those things. I mean, it even covers your vet bills. And so to be able to be on the forefront of this for service repair financing is so huge because we all know, because we work in the industry, how high that can creep up there really fast. Wow. You know, and what I love about this conversation and what we're talking about here, it's, it's about communication. All of it starts there. You know, communication, understanding, language, building the right team by asking them questions when you're hiring them and making sure that you have the right people in place. Because it's about the people first. We, like, like Owen said, we could teach them how to do these things, but do they have the right mindset? Do they have the right heart to be a solutionary for these people in the service drive, for mm -hmm. these people in the parts department, for anybody that's in any department in the, in the dealership? Yeah. Are we looking for those types of people or are we just looking to fill seats? I think we're trying to fill seats these days quite a bit. I understand. There has been in a lot of places, there's a shortage of employees we or people who want to work. And, you know, and we're paying more. We're paying more for really less work, it seems. But at the same time, it's our own fault. We need to put people in there. We made this marketplace, this whole automotive seem like a shady place to work. Whether it was in the service department or in the sales department, people didn't like coming in. We're fixing that now. We have solutionaries out there like Robin. We have solutionaries out there like Owen and Brad and so many others that are doing big things. Shout out to, you know, another one of our favorite BDC people, you know, one of our sponsors, Dealership Toolkit. You know, a lot of people out there are oh, doing yeah. big things. You know, and there's people here. Wendy Reeves. Wendy she's on Reeves, your Sean yeah. Armour up, in, up, up, up in Canada, eh? Wendy's right? got something to say here. Love it. Absolutely all about the conversations. Love Give the Wendy. customers a voice, an outlet for their voices to be heard. Whether sales or service, BDC, we are the outlet for the customer. We are the heart that pumps blood to all the departments in the dealership to better serve the customer the way he or she wants to be served. Well done, my auto peeps. Boom. And she sounds so much more beautiful than I do. <laughs> Wendy is amazing. Wendy is awesome, folks. If you don't know Wendy... Tag out with we her. Love She's you, somebody Wendy. awesome. Sean. Sean. Eh? Yeah, you put it on there. there That's right. Is. Is it's cold at? up there, eh? And you know, we got that going. We got, we, you know, we have some amazing Frederick Thorne. Hey, what's up, Fred? What's my up, man, everybody? Dude. Right. So, you know, you got Stan Share up here. He loves BDC yes, also. Ma does. Martha's killing it. And we, of course, we got Jess Burkhardt up on here. What's up, That's Jeff? right. Check right. It you know, she's epic AF, right? So, you know, we have a lot of other solutionaries that are typing in things in different places that we haven't been able to see during our show. But what I could tell you is we love you all for being here. This is, this is huge, folks. Just understand communication, communication, communication. And if you don't have the staff for communication, there's people that have staff like Robin. Reach out holler at her she can teach you she can at least point the way she'll even give you free advice if you ask if it's just a quick simple thing she'll give you a quick simple even, but most, if, it's long, even if it's long it doesn't matter. And, and what i do love too is even if it hurts yep. that's the thing car guys car gals we got to take the answers whether we like them or we don't right if we want truth then let us take truth and let us apply it and so many times we have kept in a veil these things that we actually can use to wow. make our, our dealerships better we need to stop that no veil. Let's no, quit, quit hiding it. Share ideas, folks. This industry needs all of us to be better. So let's share what we're doing that's good. Best practices. Go let's out there, go. talk about it. Let people know. Fact of the matter is, and Robin knows this, Owen knows this, and anybody who's out there been doing this long enough, is we can tell everybody the best secret sauce of it all. It doesn't mean they're going to freaking use it. Mm -hmm. They know it, but they ain't going to use it. Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing. That's why I, you know, I believe that it's okay to tell everybody everything. You know, it's that old saying, you can lead a horse to water. It doesn't mean they're going to drink, right? So just my, my point there. So share, because the more you give, the more that you put out there, the more seeds that you're planting, my friends, the more phone calls you make, BDC members out there, for the more people that you talk and you help and you actually show them, hey, this is what's wrong with your vehicle and you're doing it out of a place of love, they're going to end up coming back and doing that service with you. But you have to do it every time. You have to be consistent, communicate, and love your people, my friends. It all starts with people. Mm. Let's communicate. I love it. This was a great show today, man. And, and Owen I told y'all we're just scratching the surface. We're just scratching the surface. So <laughs> Owen, you know, any closing words for us? You know, all I got to say is that Robin being our first guest on Fix House Friday has set the bar really high. So <laughs> whatever we have for going forward, come with it because you're going to have a lot to live up to. Yes, yeah, so. that's a whole lot to follow up. She brought <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Thank you, no pressure, today. please. This come on the awesome. show. Very welcome. Very welcome. And if anybody is coming to Digital Dealer, catch up with the Women in Automotive cocktail party at American Social on Monday night. Okay, WIA, my friends, shout out to the women in automotive. Hello, a lot of big things going on over there. If you guys haven't heard, there's some new ownership, some new things, and some new ideas getting spread around. Perspective matters, and they have some diverse perspective in there, and I love it. It's different, it's new, it's fresh. I can't wait to be there. Monday night, my friends, Digital Dealer, be there, be, be there, square. Be there. And I know our next our next episode is, what, May 6th, and that's going to be a pre-Digital Dealer episode. So that's I'm it. Looking, yeah, before that, we'll, we'll announce a guest soon. and.
That's what awesome. do you all think of Miss Wendy Reeves' suggestion? <laughs> we need a part two. We might need one. All in yeah. favor, say aye. 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 Robin, we'll That's set that true. up. And we'll we'll announce that as soon as possible. Wendy, you're right on the money. This there is more to this that we so need to talk about. We just scratched the surface, and man, what an honor it was to scratch the surface with these two solutionaries that we have up here. Owen, you rock. Robin, you got any final words before we get out of here too? I don't. I'm just so happy to be part of the automotive community and to truly feel like I have solid friends that I I mean I call on all the time for help and advice. People mm -hmm. like Wendy, people like Liz and Rich at Dealership Toolkit, right. whenever I need it. I don't believe in competition. I believe there's enough business for everybody. Right. There's enough people that are doing it horrible that if you're doing it half halfway better than them, you, you've got so much business to get in there. Amen. That's 100% right. And you're right on that. On the money, Robin. That's no doubt about it. We love you all out there. For real, folks, if you guys don't know, now you know. Now you we know. are here. We are epic. And we are ready to rock and roll. It is Fix Ops Digital, Fix Ops Friday show. Right. What's That's going right. on? Right. Brad, hope you had fun at the charity event. We missed you. Can't wait to see you on the 6th. We're going to have some fun. Be ready for the pre, the pre digital dealer show That's we're gonna right. get it down we're gonna have some fun and Hit have a good time so be ready for that one we're gonna talk about what's happening at the show what we're gonna be doing while we're there lou and i are going in as press this time what press passes so watch out for, ready for the Excuse interviews me, folks y'all better stop press us coming through. pull us through if you want an interview <laughs> i'm gonna get backstage let's you know what i'm saying so anyway <laughs> i love you guys I that's right you guys. so let's go ahead and make sure that we do apply those three f-bombs that we love to use that's to make right. sure that we do keep growing together and that is to forgive focus and fly we are so thankful that you all did participate with us today thank you for those that watched it live for those that are listening on the podcast thank you so much share it around with a friend or an enemy we don't care we Doesn't just matter. want to make sure that share people share, get better. share so on three let's forgive focus and fly one two three forgive focus fly and keep growing keep growing wow what a great show today i'm so honored folks love you guys be safe be real and don't forget fix stops friday on the sixth pre-show let's go all right y'all i am lou ramirez the car guy and i'm friendly arts the subprime hero and you have been brewing solutions on the car guy coffee podcast on fix stops friday with the one and only owen Moon. Our incredible special guest, and coming back for part two, the one, the, the only, Robin Wilson. That's How right. How's it going, everybody? We love you all. Peace. Around, this show is brought to you by Fixed Ops Digital. Digital. Peace.